This video summarizes what we know and what we can surmise about how your brain works in just five minutes. This is information you need in order to understand why today's AI is not like your brain, but why future artificial intelligence will be. I'm Charles Simon, longtime AI researcher, software developer, and manager. In addition to AI work, I've developed software for several neurological test instruments and neural simulators, and along the way learned a lot about the capabilities and limitations of biological neurons and how your brain must work to do the things it does. So how does your brain work? Let's get started. The human brain is an amazing system capable of doing many things, even understanding how the brain works. Think of your brain as a black box with inputs and outputs. Inputs consisting of signals from your eyes, ears, and other senses, and outputs being motor nerves which control your body. But what goes on inside the black box? To start with, your brain stem takes care of all of the housekeeping, and your cerebellum remembers sequences of physical actions which allow your body to take coordinated actions while your neocortex does the thinking. Incoming neural signals from your senses go to custom circuitry, which can do boundary and motion detection on signals from your eyes, harmonic processing on signals from your ears, and handle and prioritize the flood of information coming in from all your senses all the time. The primitives recognized by these brain areas are passed to Pattern recognition areas which remember libraries of recognizable sounds, sights, Yellow. and feelings, which can be combined into even more complex patterns. Sequences of sounds are learned as words, and collections of image primitives are learned as objects. Combinations of words and objects begin the basis of knowledge. Your brain is very good at finding closest matches to input patterns. You can understand people who mispronounce or misspell words. You can recognize an object, even if you can see just a part. Individual neurons are good at this, too. The more a pattern of inputs matches a pattern of synaptic weights, the more likely the neuron is to fire. When it fires, the neuron sends a neurotransmitter pulse to other neurons via even more synapses. Clusters of neurons form a graph of things connected by relationships so they can represent objects and their attributes. Things can also inherit attributes, so if you know that Fido is a dog, your brain only needs to remember the attributes which make Fido unique. All the other attributes are inherited from the dog thing. A remarkable form of data compression. With 16 billion neurons in your neocortex, you can know many millions of things, each of which might have thousands of relationship-connected attributes, which are also things. With this sort of memory, when you see an object, which causes its related neuron cluster to fire, you can also recall its attributes, and when an attribute thing fires, you can recall other things which have that attribute. After recognition, the incoming sensory information is assembled in an internal reality model where your brain does its best to make sense of what it sees and hears to build a facsimile of your surroundings, estimating distances to objects you see. You use this model to learn your way around your environment and know where various things are relative to yourself. You can close your eyes and remember where things are. Your brain can also present related or random information from your knowledge base, and you can imagine things. You can remember groups of objects which represent a scene or a situation. As you continue to learn, your brain stores sequences of experiences and their related outcomes. You can combine these with your closest match ability to note that some situations are similar to others and use this information to plan for the future by imagining possible futures in your reality model and choosing the best course of action. These sequences could relate to anything. In addition to finding your way home, sequences could relate to chess, mathematics, cooking or dancing, even interpersonal relationships. You can learn and improve these skills by remembering more and more detailed experiences. 
Imagination and planning both use information from your knowledge store and present information to your reality model. You must continuously decide on the relative quality of the actions you plan to take. So you need a set of feelings, goals, or emotions which you strive to improve. These permeate most of your brain's functions. So overall, your brain is coping with a flood of incoming sensory information, doing its best to make sense of this information and model it into your concept of reality. It matches this information with stored memories to analyze the present situation, consider future possibilities, and take the course of action which will maximize your well-being. This video has described a model of brain function which encompasses most explainable human abilities. These functions are all necessary to intelligence and our consciousness. As we learn more about the brain, we'll discover more details and add them to this model. I've just scratched the surface in this video. Many of these capabilities are already implemented in our project, the Brain Simulator 3. If you're a software developer, you can download the project from GitHub at the link in the description. And you can also join the Future AI Society to learn more and participate in our monthly online meetings and enhance the development of the software, which forms the basis for the future of artificial intelligence. If you found this information interesting, be sure to like and subscribe so the YouTube algorithm will encourage others to learn about it too. And as always, thanks for watching.